Hello everybody, I'm Nostrom here. Welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. In the last episode, we continued exploring the Emerald Grove here. And um, we met Will, the Blade of Frontiers, who is also infected and joined our party. So we have a new party member, potentially. And then we came and met the Druids, and there's obviously a lot of tension between the Tieflings and the Druids here. But the druids let us in to talk to their leader, uh, Kaga, I think was her name, where she was getting ready to imprison a child for stealing. We managed to resolve that situation. And so we're going to be uh, kind of checking things out here, seeing where it goes. Um, there's supposedly someone here who might be able to heal us. We'll have to look into that. But it also looks like that Shadowheart here has uh, something she wants to say. So, we'll start off by talking to her. I suppose you've noticed I'm not terribly fond of wolves. They're ravenous predators with fangs like daggers. It's hardly an irrational fear to harbor. You've been decent to me so far. Maybe if you can, don't make me face any more of them. At least, not alone. All right. Yeah, because there's a, a wolf kind of walking around back there. Hmm. So how would we respond here? We'll go with a little bit... A little bit kind of tough here. We can scarcely afford to show weakness right now. I hope this won't be a problem. I hope so too. I'll try my best to keep it under control. All right then. Okay. Path lies before me. Let's talk to Edgar here. Go on. Say it. You think I'm a monster? Hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah, none of these options are really what I would say, but. We'll go with this one. You're protecting your own. First, you urge grace, then, you speak truth. You surprised me twice over. A shame the grace period ends. The viper's fangs have been bared. She must guard her brood. No matter. I took back the idol of Sylvanus, and the rite is resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm, free of intruders. Hmm. Reach for your weapon. N no, no, I don't think we'll be doing that. This right must be born of powerful magic. The right of thorns. It is the tree father's gift that none come to harm. When we speak the final prayer, the great vine will sprout forth. The grove will be cloaked in bramble and thorn. No one enters, no one leaves. Sanctuary. None of this can happen while outlanders infect us. Sylvanus demands that we choke them out. Hmm. I guess we'll say what came on Zevlor's behalf as people could perish if we forced them and out. And mine perish if he stays. You showed great metal at the gate. The metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to Zevlor. Offer to guide the outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. Well, uh, seems I need to talk to Sevlor. You will do more than speak. This tale ends but one way. With the Outlander Rot cleansed, and the Grove forever shrouded. Seems kind of extreme. 
Hmm. That backpack is considered stealing. Okay. So let's see what we've got around here. Servants' quarters. Mm, nothing free to take here. What will the tieflings want next? Letting the hell child go is a mistake. Okay then. Stone tablets, a stone bed. That sounds comfortable. All right, nothing really of any interest there. Ridiculous. A we wicker chest. She's a child. A devil child. One the mortal view. No, we've us. already um we already read Yet that one. Failed. That's what matters. Oh, mugwort. That's free to take. They did a number on you, didn't they? Does that hurt? All right, Nettie. I think that's who we're actually I looking see for. You. Just give me a moment. I uh, will be patient. This medicament. There. It's up to her now. Life or death. Now, what was it you needed? Um, let's see. I'm looking for Nettie. You found her, but I still don't know what she can do for you. Uh, healing, as soon as possible. Come here. Let's have a look at you. You seem healthy enough. A bit tired around the eyes, maybe. Hmm. No good way of putting this. I uh, have a tadpole in my head. A tadpole? A mind flare tadpole? You know of them? Can you help me? I... Uh... I'll do what I can. Come, follow me. I might be able to help. All you need right, to be then. quick. This way. A dissected drow, huh? This one had the same problem as you. Attacked us in the woods together with some goblins. Tadpole crawled out of his head soon after. Hmm. Is everyone being captured by mind flayers these days? Didn't think it was a common experience. Rather too common as of late. At least that's what Master Halson suspected. A pity you got me instead of him. He understands these things. Studied them. Still, we have options. All right. Let's see what we can do. Mm, all right. I'll take anything that can help. Of course. Now. Tell me what's been happening. Any symptoms? Strange events? Hmm. I can merge my mind with anyone else that's infected. Victims can identify each other. Not that the others know they're victims, of course. How do you pick up the parasite? Halson was desperate to find where all this was happening. On a mind flayer ship, I was kidnapped and infected. A mind flayer ship? But Master Halson was sure. Look, you've been straight with me, so I'll be straight with you. You're dangerous. If you transform here, we're all dead. 
But you seem like a good soul. You deserve a chance to save yourself. This is a vial of wyvern poison. Swear to me, you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms. Hmm. I thought you could cure me. What about that branch of yours? The thorn? Coated in a fatal toxin. It was a last resort. In case I couldn't trust you. I don't have a cure. Only a way out. I'm sorry for misleading you. But I had to be sure you weren't a threat before I told you everything. Now, do I have your word or not? All right. Swear it. Very well. I hope it doesn't come to that, but thank you. Here. You know, I've spent my life treating folk and never once saw a mind flare infection. Then suddenly, there's dozens of you. Maybe more. Master Halson and I were tracking them, studying them, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Because you should all be changing. There should be a small army of mind flayers out there. But you're not. Weird powers aside, you seem perfectly normal. Hmm. What do you mean, should be changing? Mind flayers reproduce by infecting someone with their parasite. Seven gruesome days later, the victim transforms and a new mind flayer is born. The thing in your skull, though, it's different to anything in our records. It's one of their worms, for sure. But this one gives you powers. Telepathic connections. And it doesn't turn you into one of them. Not yet, anyhow. Uh, you said you were attracting other victims. Did they change? Hard to say. But there's a lot we don't know. Infected. Folks like you have been converging on an old temple of Saluna, and I've no idea why. When Master Halson heard the adventurers were heading that way, he saw a chance to get answers, joined on the spot. Whatever he found there, he didn't make it back. All right, well, what do you want me to do? The thing is, I've sent birds to find him, but the place is rotten with goblins. None of us can even get close. You, though, you're one of them. Technically speaking, I mean. They won't kill someone carrying their parasite. If you can find Halson and get him out of there, we can discover what he learned. And perhaps he can save your life. How's that sound? It sounds like you're making a lot of assumptions that could kill me. The way I see it, you have two options. Halson, or that wyvern poison. I don't envy your choice, truly. But this is the hand fate's dealt you. All right, we'll look for him. Thank you. It would mean everything to the Grove, to me. I wish I could tell you more, but only those adventurers know what happened out there. All I can say for sure is they all went to the old temple of Saluna. And Master Halson didn't make it back. Good luck out there. And if things start to go bad, remember the vial. Remember your oath. One step at a time, Nettie. Come on. All right. There's something in that vessel. Take a closer look. Uh... Okay. Keep your distance, darling. It's a little bit of theft, but we can be discreet. A drow's letter. Orders are taken from the body of a drow scout. They are written in an elegant, if angry, hand.
All right. Track the druid. Find whatever burrow he runs to and report back to me. Remember, you are only a scout. Do not engage. Do not kill anyone. Simply observe in return. I shall decide what to do next. Okay, then. I have a lot on my mind. Um, well, in it. Oh, wait a minute. Allison's journal. Extraordinary happenings. While meditating in the forest, Nettie and I were ambushed by a pack of goblins, led by a drow. We had no choice but to defend ourselves. That is not the extraordinary, or rather disturbing part. On the drow's death, a parasitic creature emerged from the corpse and attempted to escape. I managed to capture it and have the host's cadaver here in my study. I've told no one of my fears. Nettie suspects, but uh, knows better than to ask. I'll investigate further before informing the others. Kaga will demand answers I don't yet have. I had better record any further findings in a separate volume and keep them upon my person. Least less prying eyes jump to the wrong conclusions. Mind flayer parasite specimen. I'll take that. Bottled tentacles. Autumn crocus? No. Don't go there. As long as no one is uh right on my feet. No one's over here paying any attention. We'll just uh, you know check things out. That's curious. Hmm? Not sure what we saw. On death and resurrection. Uh, we've already read that one. Missives of Candle Keep. A selection, a select collection of the most notable letters sent from Candle Keep. Many are dry reports of celestial movements or incomprehensible details of arcane rituals. However, this letter catches your eye. To the Sage Elminster. Over the past year, I've delivered many of your letters to Master Gorion, I, uh, so I wanted to be the one to deliver this sad news. Alas, he is with us no more. Gorion and his word left Candle Keep soon after your last letter to him arrived. They departed in the middle of the night, but were waylaid shortly after on the road to Baragost. The gate warden tells me that Gorion saw to it that several of his attackers joined him in the next world before he was struck down. I hope this brings you the same grim comfort it brings me. Of his ward, there was no sign. In some better news, I received your letter to the library and was able to find much of the material you requested. It has been carefully secured and will travel with this letter. Yours in honor, Tristan P. Shale, librarian at Candlekeep. P.S. I hope you forgive my current curiosity, but might I ask, why do you need so much information about Bail Spawn? Or Ball Spawn? What exactly are you working on? Hmm. Soul Coins, a treatise. Academic disclosure. This research was funded independently and conducted at a site in Avernus, the first plane of the Nine Hells. Candlekeep does not encourage or promote the entrapment of mortal souls. A disclaimer. All right. Soul coins, as a concept, are one of merciless simplicity. The sum of personal and magical essence, the soul, is bound into a minted piece of infernal iron and used as currency by devils in their cohort. They are frequently traded for their value can purchase mercenaries, magical items, and even fuel the strange engines in the hells. However, there is a fascinating culture surrounding soul coins as well. I spoke to a devil who admitted she has one coin that she will never sell, for it was the bargain that got her promoted out of Lemur status. She connected me to a half-elf half -elf warlock who had promised his soul to a coin after death. I was able to look at his contract, which is reproduced below. The next 50 pages appear to be painstakingly written legal document in Infernal, 
with a headache inducing number of footnotes. Yes. All right, soul coins. Hey, this is a scroll of color spray. Thank you. Disorders of the nerves and mind, a treatise. There came to be a woman who I shall henceforth, refer, uh, henceforth call R. Greatly distraught at the unusual tempers of her husband, who I, whom I shall henceforth call B. Three months prior, he'd suffered night sweats, crying out from sleep that he bore the mark of chaos. Two months prior, he'd taken a calling himself by the name Saravak. One month ago, he'd speak of little else but the throne for which he was destined. I attended to B at the couple's farmhouse. He sat calmly at the table, an unknown book clutched to his chest. I intended no curse nor a loathsome spirit upon him, nor the presence of magic. Yet upon shining the light of candle flame upon him, he raised the book high and exclaimed, The deaths they bring shall awaken the father, and through them he will rise. I snatched the book from his hand and flung it into the hearth, where it burned not in red or yellow flame, but pure black. I left but a single scrap, reading, He foresaw his coming death and seated his essence across the land. B shivered and sighed as if waking from nightmare. He had no memory of the book, nor the words he had spoken. Diagnosis? Unspecified neurotic enthrallment. Treatment? Herbal tincture of garlic and drace, sipped thrice daily until exhaustion lifts. All right, then. I don't know if there's anything else interesting in here. Oral histories of Faerun, Gift, and Mind Flayer. This book comprises several chapters, one for each cited source. It claims to contain first-hand transcriptions of the oral histories of several storytellers of the realm. Chapter 4. Halidor the Swift, 700 years of age, wood elf storyteller hailing from the wood of sharp teeth. It took me several days of quiet habitation in the wood before the veritable, uh, venerable Palador felt comfortable revealing his presence to me. The longer I stayed demonstrating I was no threat to his health and peace, the more open he was to gentle inquiry. This tale, relayed to me on a chilly morning as we stoked a small fire between us, was like none I had heard before or since. I asked him for a fiction, and he insisted emphatically it was as true as his own right eye. Long ago, before my eyes and ears, before your lonesome quill, dear scribe, there was an empire of people, or perhaps only belief. An empire of brain-eaters, soul-wasters, they called themselves Lithids, the flayers of binds. The children of Gith were bowed, bent in service to the Flayers, a passionate people made to serve a cold belief. The Flayers were untouchable, their minds a great oppressor. No sh proud will or passion could break Gith's children free. Until at last, a reckoning, its source unknown, its power unproven, but its events history-making. The, the cowed would not be cracked. Gith's children fought back valiantly, their freedom theirs, the flares bent and broken till today. All right. Uh, Fringe Philosophy, Volume 5. A dense academic volume printed with no eye for design or delight. Scroll of Charm Person. Thank you. The publisher's note claim this volume promotes magical theory too radical for the mainstream. This excerpt is attributed to the High Artificer Thara, Thara Bryn of Baldur's Gate. I suppose they seek to silence me, believing that an artificer of the High House would not stoop to publish in any volume outside of the great Gondian journals so they so diligently guard, but they forget that I am not so grand. Before I lent my name and my knowledge to the High House of Wonders and all mar the marvels therein, I was not but a lazy farm girl who liked to look up. And that was how I first saw them, the slow and serene earth motes, entire mountains migrating through the sky above. It was later I learned of their origins, of the ancient Netherese Empire that fashioned them, 
of the residual magic so potent it sustained them still. The wizards of Netheril carved marvels out of the mundane, lifted the earth aloft for industry, for sport. It was later still, after I earned my place at the High House, that I learned of the long shadow Netheril cast along the evolution of our craft. The great flying cities fell in folly and flames. Oh, that they're great flying cities fell in folly and flames does not diminish the wonders they wrought, and this stubborn aversion to studying them, to learning what they learned, is the very antithesis of Gon's teachings. Yes, many of the cast catastrophes inflicted upon the centuries were fruit born of meddling with Netherese seed. Yes, their last shining bastion fell into shadow, their lore twisted to Shar's dark and destructive designs. And yes, I say again, whether the High House will sanction it or no, to study the very flame of creation is worth it, even should the fires consume us. Okay, then. I guess there's one more section of these books. Soul coins, missives, death and resurrection, magic of the weave, an introduction, and scroll of detect thoughts. Um, few try to understand the weave. A true pity, for only they who are truly attuned to the weave can rightly call themselves spellcasters. Thus comes the question: What is the weave? Is it, it is an essential element of the universe? It runs through everything in unseen threads. Is what makes magic possible. It is also, though I will not go into further detail here, the goddess Mistra herself. The magic of the weave, Mistra, and spell plague. The weave isn't magic, precisely. Rather, it is the raw material from which magic is woven, not entirely unlike how a collection of threads is shaped and formed into a garment. Those with the necessary talent and skill can manipulate the weave and perform magic by casting spells. Developing this skill takes years of learning and constant practice. You might have heard of those who can cast spells because they are born with an innate connection to the weave, commonly called sorcerers, or worse, because they struck a bargain with an otherworldly creature, also known as warlocks. Do not be deceived, their magic is unpredictable, uncontrolled, and in some cases not even rightfully theirs. No, to truly know and manipulate the weave is an art, but those wizards who master it will know the limitless power and beauty the weave provides. Okay. And that appears to be everything in here. Oh. <laughs> Sterion is, is still standing there on his own. What if Halson is... No. Don't go there. All right. I don't have talk with animals. Um, Loi? Or Loic? I don't want blood on my hands. We have the right to defend our home. Please leave. Our hospitality has limits, and they were crossed long ago. Okay, then. Wrath? You did well to speak up for the girl. That snake is fickle. A tragedy prevented. That Kaga seems dangerous. Well seen. Well spotted. We've let a snake replace our leader. Uh, Kaga seems happy to rule the roost. Who's your real leader? Master Halsin. Perhaps Goblin called. Perhaps dead. He'd set Mistress Korga back in line. Hold her to task. Stop this damned ritual. More will die if the rite is finished. So many more, sent into a world gone mad. All right, well, we're going to be looking for Halsin. I would give anything to see Halsin return home. Hmm. I'd like a more solid offer than anything. Our need is great. I will open the treasures of this grove to you, even if the circle forbids it. Halsin is an elf with the presence of a bear. He left west with the adventurers. You won't mistake the first druid for anyone else. Come, boy. It's all right. Oh, there's a plaque over here? That mural, 
Darkest hour, a concord made, twixt harp and wild against the shade. Harp and wild? You recall stories of an alliance between druids and the harpers, but the details are vague. Somebody was saying something? They look like dark... Okay. I guess we'll go find the adventurers and have another conversation with them. See if they can give us any more information. You nearly died. Did you hear me? Oh, hold on. Your mother and I have done. Keep their confidence if you insist. Arabella. Let's talk to the girl's parents. You ever scare me like that again, and I'll feed you to a knoll. Mom, I'm fine. Stop it. Our little Hellion told us what happened. Thank you. Don't know what we'd do without her. Hmm. This could have been a badly. Keep her in line from now on. The Nine Hells will sooner freeze over. But we'll try. I receive Komira's Locket. Grants us where the ability to cast Dancing Lights. Interesting. We will give that to Shadowheart. I don't care what Mole says. Stupid and reckless. Oh, the waiting's getting to me. If we left, we could at least. Now, where were those adventurer guys? Don't be grumpy, Roland. We'll get What's to the this? city soon. I am not grumpy. Scowl on your face before frighten a troll. <laughs> You're an idiot. Return to Zevlor. All right. Apparently, that's through here. I ain't leaving town for a good while after this. Feels like we're all waiting to die. There they are. Let's talk to them. Whatever we want. I'm drinking. You're leaving. All right. I'm not leaving until you tell me exactly what happened to the first druid. I already told you. He was at the temple ruins with us. But it ain't like we forced him to go along. As soon as he heard we had a contract to find that night song relic, he was more eager than a hound in heat. When the goblins jumped us, most of my crew scarpered, just like I taught them to. The old codger didn't. And where exactly did you leave him? Gobbo's a hold up in the temple ruins, out west of here. Last I saw Alson, he was right in the thick of them. If you head that way, you'll likely smell them or hear their drums before you see them. All right. Thanks. Yeah, right. Secluded chamber. Anything interesting in here? The devil you know, an autobiography. Have you ever had a god change your blood? It is a horrifying thing, even for those who may desire it. Yet few tieflings wished for Asmodeus to claim their bodies, only to be given no choice in the matter. It is not as if we were well loved before the Archdevil's Gambit. Our people have always struggled against the notion of devil kin, as if a single drop of Inferno Icar in inescapably corrupts. How amusing, when so many others willingly sell their souls to fiends, if their culture as a whole escapes the blame. By what method can we redeem ourselves when the crime is not ours? I would drive a blade into every warlock that aided Asmodeus's damned ritual, but personal vengeance cannot undo the will of a god, much less one as slippery as the Lord of Lies. 
When every passerby thinks you a thief and heretic, it is deeply tempting to become one. The only thing that has stopped me is knowing Asmodeus wants nothing more than for all of us to fall from grace. Alright, we are in view, I think. So, no, we're not. Not everyone subscribes to what is mine is yours, it seems. We did get noticed. No word from the scouts yet. No, sir. But if there's a clear path past those goblins, they'll find it. Yes. Of course. All right, let's talk to Zevlart. I heard what happened. Thank you for protecting the child. If the druids are this far gone, then it's not just goblins we have to fear. So we can risk violence here or face it for certain on the road. Quite the choice, isn't it? All right. Leaving the grove is the best option. I can help. It's good of you to offer, but there's a whole army of goblins out there. We'd need an army of our own to escort us safely to Baldur's Gate. And while I don't doubt your abilities, you're no army. There may be a way, though. Goblins are ill-disciplined. It's unlike them to organize so cleverly. Somebody must be leading them, bringing discipline to their ranks. Take out that leadership, and they'll scatter. It's no small thing to ask, but I've seen you fight. You're equal to the task. Hmm. Kill all the goblin, le the goblin horde leaders. I'll see what I can do. Everyone in this camp depends on it. Thank you. We'll be ready to leave as soon as you give word. Hmm. Asterion doesn't like that. Too bad. The gate needs fortification. Please have mercy. Okay, somebody was talking. There's something out that way. Well, we're getting toward the end of the episode, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to Roadside Cliffs. Because we did actually manage to find ourselves a shovel. I'll be keeping an eye on you. Understand? If I choose to kill you... You will not even see it. Play nice. Something over there. Oh, well, hello. Scroll of Tasha's hideous laughter and a scroll of Misty Step. All right, then. Potion of healing and some gold. You know what? I'll take it. I want to explore down that route. You know what? I might. I mean, can't get there. We can get because uh, the door is closed. So, you know about these parasites. More goblins. Will we What's survive next? them? Only if my people extract them. The only other cure is the blade. Okay.
We should be able to use this elevator now. They make good bait, drawing attention away from us. Judicious advice. How puzzling. All right, everybody on. It doesn't touch me. Still alive. So that's progress. Don't waste a step. All right. I think what we'll do is we'll. Oh, there's a bear down here. Orm. Let's talk to the bear, even though we don't have to speak with animals. Oh, well, I guess we gotta have to speak with animals. I only need to find a source of that. Hmm. Chest. Elixir of the Colossus, Elixir of Vengeance, and a nice pile of gold. Excellent. Is that the only thing that was down here? No, there's another path up there. Alright, but we might go ahead and just end the episode here. And we'll explore up that path when we come back. And... Then I guess go start our search for Halson. And this goblin camp. And see what we can do about it. Alright, so for now, we'll stop here. So if you guys enjoyed it, thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you next time.